Okay, so I've often had questions about is the four gig Raspberry Pi 5 good enough? So I've got a couple of eight gigs, so this one here and this one inside this Raspad, uh, and they work great, but I haven't really played around with the four gig Pi. So I've booted it up. Let's have a look at the desktop performance first of all. Now this video is gonna concentrate mostly on desktop performance and also a bit of retro gaming because a lot of people have asked if, it, if a four gig is enough for retro gaming. Now I did a load of tests before uh, on a Raspberry Pi 4, two gig versus four gig, and also eight gig versus four gig. So if you wanna have a look at those older videos, um, but even on the two gig, it was, it was actually quite surprisingly good. Uh, so let's open up some web pages. So let's go for BBC Sport. Let's go for Hot UK Deals. These are sites that I pick because they've got quite a lot of stuff on them. Uh, so BBC Sport and then Hot UK Deals, uh, especially at the moment as it's uh, nearing to Black Friday. So let's accept that license. Chromium definitely works smoother on the Pi 5 at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm not into Firefox yet, but I know that it's gonna get more optimization as time goes on. So if we start playing a video in this, so let's do a search for the, Let's do a search for HDR. And I'll only cut bits out if I've made a mistake rather than uh, the performance. So I'll try and just keep this rolling. Uh, so we can see here, it's picked 720. Let's go for 1080. I just need to check where the audio is going. There you go, and so the audio is going through my speaker. So I've got two pages open here at the moment. Uh, let's go for uh, Raspberry Pi. And what else can we look at? Let's go with Apple. And let's go with, uh, I don't know, Sky News. I have really thought this through. So if we click on a story in here, and then Hot UK Deals, if we click on a deal, let's see what the top deals are at the moment. Heinz Beans, Red Dead Redemption 2 PC, 12.99, that's cheap. Uh, so just to show, so while it's playing the YouTube video, in the background, uh, all of this is launching up and not struggling. So I think from a web browser point of view, obviously you might have, let me just turn off that audio, uh, you might have uh, you know, more tabs open. It obviously depends what you do, um, but that's definitely coping well. So no problem with that. Uh, let's have a look. If we launch HTOP uh, and see how much RAM is being used currently, so memory 1.7 gig, uh, 3.9. If I pop that up in the corner here, let's get P sensor going. My fan hasn't come on at the moment. It's a temperature controlled fan. I showed a video of this 52 Pi case uh, separately. Temperature is 72, 70 degrees. Yeah, it's definitely on. Is my, is my fan even plugged in? I might have unplugged it. <laughs> Well, let's see if it comes on anyway. Uh, let's go back to the browser, which will still be playing. Well, it's playing some other video now. Uh, and we can flick through. So if we go Formula One, and let's go back to the main page. So as a browser, I think you'll see that, you know, if you've got a low-end Windows computer, it, it doesn't perform as well as this. this. This is really, you know, nice and swift. Actually, Apple's pages are often, uh, really quite full of sort of transitions and things like that. Oh, they actually come up differently on an iPad. Yeah, lots of things kind of move around and stuff. It doesn't seem to do that on this, but as you can see, loads of high-res images and it's going really nice and smoothly through that. If we pick a new story, uh, so Chancellor's statement. Yeah, it's coping pretty well. Let's get this a bit smaller so we can see all the things working in the background. I'm gonna do some retro gaming, uh, and on this system, I think I've got the uh, GameCube emulator, which I wanted to show, or is it PS2? I'll have a look in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so that's working, uh, and memory 1.8 gig, uh, 3.95. So from a point of view of Chromium, it, it seems to be coping very, very well. The fan did come on momentarily just then, I heard it. I don't know if, you, if it picked it up on the microphone. And in fact, you can see Oh, it is spinning, it just looks, so when I look into it, it looks like it's static, but it is spinning, and at the moment it's going at 3,166 RPM. So it, it's sped up just now, 
Uh, let's go back and see YouTube is still playing in the background. I mean, obviously, that's probably not realistic. You don't normally play a 1080 video in the background. And what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six tabs open. I'm going to close all these down now because there is something else I wanted to do in the browser. And that is wipe out browser PS1. I'm not sure if it'll find it with that. And you'll notice the clock's changed because I was looking up who told me about this. So thanks to Nico Bellic for letting me know about this. Uh, so there's a version of the racing game Wipeout online in the browser. So if we try, let's go with this one, Retro Game CC, start game. Now the issue with this might be that I don't think it supports keyboard. I'm going to go full screen anyway um, because... It will certainly look better in the video. Game core ready, download game data. So what it does is it downloads the actual game in the background and the emulator works within the browser, which is pretty cool. And what I'll do is I'll also show this uh, running on a Pi 4 8 gig um, uh, in a separate screen. I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, but uh, basically I'll record me doing exactly the same thing and we'll see how the performance is, uh, how it looks, uh, obviously with the emulators it'll be much easier because it'll show me frames per second um, but on this I think we'll be able to see if it's running at full speed or not. Not sure how big the game is. The discs were uh, CDs on PlayStation so maybe 650 to 700 megabytes maximum. There we go, so ordinary PlayStation launch. Battery. Put some audio back on. Wipe out 2097. And... I've got an Xbox controller plugged in. Oh, I think it is working with the controller because I just pressed the button and it seemed to skip that intro. Oh, it is. I can't believe this works with the controller. Can I go full screen? Wow. I might need to get rid of the audio. Okay, X is B for me for some reason. So let's get rid of the music and go back. Oh, and actually, uh, so the A and B and the X and Y buttons are opposites. I mean, it shouldn't make any difference for this. And there's probably a way of configuring it. So let's start that. This is so cool that this is pl a PlayStation 1 game working in the browser. Is that my accelerate button? I think B is. And Wipeout was so hard. This looks alright. Let's hit those blue ones to get a bit of speed. And I'll obviously put, put them both side by side and we'll see how they look. But I would say that feels alright. I think you can use up and down to go over things uh, on Wipeout. It's such a twitchy game. Yeah, that's super impressive. Wow. Let's just turn on H top, so I'm going to crash now. Uh, so if I minimize this, so we're still using 2.16 gig of our 4 gig of RAM, so that is very impressive. So I'm now running at 720. Let's run the Dolphin emulator and let's open up a game. So I thought I'd try Smuggler's Run because I haven't done that for a while. So I've got the FPS at the top of the screen. So you can see it's running at 30 at the moment. Okay, not struggling with the menus at all. Now I'm going to concentrate on the systems that are harder to run. So the more modern day systems. Older systems you can have no trouble emulating. Um, but I just wanted to see what it was like with things like GameCube, PS2, Saturn. I know Saturn's not that new, but it's hard to emulate. Okay, so what I'll try and do is a similar route on both. There we go. There's always one bit that I crash into and I've got to be mindful there's a hedge here somewhere. Ah, oh, I've missed it. Perfect. So let's just drive around and obviously you'll be able to compare and I'm not going to be able to, to replicate that unfortunately. Um, but you'll be able to look at the frames per second and see how it's working. But it's not struggling at all on this GameCube game. Yeah, happy with that. Before we quit out of this operating system, I'm going to change it back to 1080 and just open a load of things and just see how well it copes. 
So display settings and back to 1080. And right, let's move this down here. Let's open HTOP again and move that up to here. Then we'll have the Discover Store. We'll open Gparted. We'll open Raspberry Pi Imager. And well, let's open the Dolphin Emulator up again. And you'll see that it's layering everything up. Uh, what we like for RAM, 1.19 gig at the moment. One thing that would play havoc with that would be the browser. So let's open the browser and see how much that makes an impact. And again, hot UK deals. So that, well, let's launch that and let's go into YouTube. It, de it definitely doesn't feel slow. It's, it's not struggling, so it is coping with it. I am running this on an SSD drive, which is obviously faster than an, an SD card, but not the fastest drives you can get. Obviously, I'm waiting to get NVMe and M.2. So if I start playing my MX Linux video recently, uh, you can see that that's playing. And it's still not struggling for RAM. It, it somehow is managing it very, very well with all of these things open. Let's open Firefox as well. And uh, then we've got two browsers open at the same time. Firefox is quite slow to start up, but it, but it obviously works fine. Let's go to BBC News. I'm just going to turn off my audio because I don't want to hear me speaking while I'm trying to talk. But yeah, as you can see, the RAM is definitely ramping up. The CPUs are working harder. I can hear the fan has come on, but it's, it's coping with it fine. Let's click on this so I can then move around that page. Let's go back to this one and I can move around that page. Yeah. It, it's impressive. Right, more gaming, I think. So let's shut this down and reboot in a different operating system so I can show what PS2 is like. So that was running from a 240 gig SSD. This operating system is gonna be running on a little GeekPi 32 gig micro SD card. So let's pop that in. And this is Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is the one that I got to work with the PlayStation 2 emulator. I did get it to work on an early version of Raspberry Pi OS, but the newer one, I can't get it to work on. So let's boot that up. There we go, nice big icons. So let's go to my PlayStation 2 folder and launch that. And uh, I was gonna do GTA Vice City. Such a shame I have to skip the uh, intro because of the audio. Okay, so no issues with the intro. And I've got a save state on here, so if I press escape and load that so that I can show the same bit uh, on both pies, sort of side by side. You can see I can look around, everything's looking nice. Let's just drive down the strip. And we'll try and replicate that on the eight gig Pi. Oh, sorry. It's working all right. Oh, not gonna get through there. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe I should have picked a slower car. But yeah, I think you can see that that seems to be working pretty well. FPS is showing at tw a steady 25. Drop down to 24 then for a second. But, uh, but yeah, that seems to be working fine. I think that's probably enough footage of that. Oh dear. <laughs> Okay, so one more game system. Let's go with Sega Saturn. Uh, this is Recall Box, which I've got a separate video on. Okay, here we go. Let's go with a bit of Sega Rally. Okay, all the audio is perfect. Sega Rally Championship. And let's just skip straight into a game. Okay, so it looks like a nice solid 60 FPS. Such a good game, I love the handling on this. Really, really good in the arcade as well, oh dear. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm trying to look up at the FPS, but obviously it's quite a frantic game. But uh, it's looking to me like it's staying at 60 on the 4 gig. Pi 5, which is exactly what you want. Oh dear. 
Oh no, that was terrible. And that. Yeah, that's very nice. Really pleased to see that running so well. Again, it's an old game, but the Saturn, some things are harder to emulate. So on the Sega Saturn, it was constantly at 60 FPS. So I haven't bothered to do split screen because obviously it's not going to get better than 60 FPS on the 8 gig Pi 5. Uh, GTA was very impressive. I think it was pretty much the same on both of them. They both dropped frames at different times, but they pretty much stayed at the 25 FPS that the game should play at. And I have played this for longer than this to try it out and it was absolutely fine. And uh, same with Smuggler's Run. I mean, there really wasn't much in it. It was pretty much holding 60 FPS. Probably was no need to do the split screen. Um, and uh, the same with Wipeout, although I couldn't get the FPS on there, I think it looked pretty much the same. So from these tests uh, for retro gaming and basically as a, a desktop system, for most things, it's gonna be absolutely fine to get the four gig. And the reason I kind of uh, went down this route is that I had a Facebook ad show up for, I think it was Pi Hut or Pi Moroni, that said they had four gigs in stock available now. Now when I clicked on it, they'd sold out. But uh, I think a lot of people just aren't gonna buy this machine because they're gonna think that it isn't powerful enough. Now, if you can get an eight gig, it is only $20 or 20 pounds more in most cases. And so I think, you know, I, my advice would be to basically get the eight gig model if you can. But if you can't, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with this four gig model. It is very impressive and uh, it's still gonna do most of the things you wanna do. Obviously the maker side is gonna be super easy uh, for a four gig in most cases, but if you're gonna run much more advanced things, maybe you do need that extra RAM. And obviously there, there's thoughts of a 16 gig RAM version in the future. So watch this space. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.